everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 48. Now, last episode, we were working on getting the auto-crafting recipes for our advanced solar panels fully up and running. And uh, since the end of last episode, I have processed 15 glowstone in our molecular transformer. So we now have 15 sunarium pieces. So if we go ahead and throw those into our AE system, we should now be able to actually go ahead and finish this whole thing off and make ourselves some advanced solar panels. Now, don't worry, we're not going to be spending the whole episode on this. We are literally going to just do this crafting recipe and then move on. We did far too much of this last episode. Uh, we should be able to just do something like this. Teach our AE system how to make the Iridium reinforced plates using the Sunarium ingots that we have. Uh, sorry, Sunarium uh, pieces that we have over here. And then if we go ahead and for one of the last times for now, throw that into the Emmy interface, that should know how to make some advanced solar panels. But uh, again, one more thing that I want to make before that real quick is I want to make a charge pad from Industrial Craft, which kind of works in a very similar way to this guy over here, the wireless charger. Uh, the wireless charger we have over here charges up like our armor and any of our tools that run off redstone flux, like this guy over here, the wireless terminal. But uh, what the charge pad does is being from Industrial Craft, it will charge items that contain EU, for example, our diamond drill and our new electric wrench, which I don't think I've actually talked about. Uh, it's fairly easy to make it's just a wrench and a small power unit which is made using some generic industrial craft stuffs and this thing just has a drastically lower chance of breaking your industrial craft machines when you go to pick them up uh, i think somebody in the comment section actually also suggested using a dolly from the jabber mode to actually move these as well uh, saying that they didn't actually break them at all which uh, i haven't actually tried but that sounds like it could be pretty cool anyway this guy over here the charge pad i'm gonna put it right there Actually, I might not because I think we have a cable there. Uh, let me just... Yeah, we do. We have a cable there. Okay, I'm going to put it right somewhere over here. But basically, this thing is going to allow us to charge all of our stuff pretty easily. It's fairly simple to make, just requiring two circuits and some pressure plates, some rubber. And the most expensive part is, of course, the MFE. You do have different tiers. We have the bat box, the CESU, the MFE, and the MFSU. Uh, these are all going from the lowest tier to the highest tier. We're going to go with the MFE because it's kind of the one that's somewhat easy to make. This thing requires Lapatron crystals, which are just a pain. Uh, it's somewhat easy to make and pretty good, outputting five. 12 EU per tick should be more than enough for the drill and the wrench that we have right now. So for this thing, we're going to need an MFE, which is just four of these energy crystals, which are, of course, made of the energy and dust, which is made of four diamonds. So let's grab ourselves 16 diamonds, like so. We're going to be using a lot of diamonds, by the way, today, guys. Uh, so just to get ready for that, we're going to use a ton of our diamonds. Thankfully, I haven't actually gone and checked the quarry world in a while, so we probably have, like, another stack out over there. But uh, that should go ahead and make us some diamonds. I think, other than that, we should have pretty much everything we need to make this charge pad. We are just missing the MFE. Do we have the basic machine frame and the cables? That is a good question. We do not. Gold cables are fairly easy to make. It's just some gold and some rubber, as you will probably know if you're watching this episode, because we've done so much industrial craft over the past couple of episodes here. And, of course, we need gold cables first. So let's grab our forge hammer, do something like this. And a little while later, we have ourselves an MFE, and finally, we can get ourselves a charge pad. Nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and request that our AE system... Actually, we need, we need to teach it the final recipe. Let's go back to solar panels, and can we teach it this? No, what are we missing? Are we missing, like, all of it, just everything? And uh, let's go ahead and uh, craft, like, one of those. Let's craft, like, one of... Um, <laughs> we, need to, we need like one of everything in order to actually start crafting this stuff. And uh, that should be fairly easy. We should have an Iridium plate. Uh, actually, I don't know if we will. We'll go ahead and craft one. Uh, in a second here, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this thing to also craft us a couple of advanced solar panels And what I'll do between episodes is I'll probably set them up on the roof of the building here I'm thinking right about just kind of like here for the time being with uh, our advanced solar panels And then I'll hook them up using uh, some uh, some cables probably gold cables to our charge pad Which I will 
try and put here uh, because we do spend a lot of time. Actually, I might put it there because we do spend a lot of time stood here doing stuff in the AE system. And I think it's probably going to be the most efficient place to put it so that we can charge up all of our tools and just have them all working all the time. But I will do all that stuff between episodes. You don't need to see me stand here and start crafting all this stuff up. We'll teach the system how to make advanced solar panels once we have all the little bits. And then I'll request like three, set it up, and it'll all be good. So... What I actually want to do this episode is I was wandering around the base before we start, and I was like, what do I want to do today? And I realized that we had quite a few projects that we'd started on and didn't really come back to and tie up. And with the world download coming up at episode 50 soon, I kind of want to be at a nice point where people can download the world and play along with some of the stuff and kind of have wrapped up a few of the projects that we started earlier on. Uh, for example, we have this little room down here, which I have not explained at all yet. And we also have bees. Bees are something that we started a while back now, and I haven't touched on since. So today, we are going to work on bees. And the reason we're going to work on bees is because up until now, we have put a lot of time and energy into bees and got nothing back. And what I want to work on over probably this episode and next episode is starting to use bees to get us some really cool stuff that we can't really get anywhere else. So first things first, oh my god, the flowers are insane. We have just got a ton of them over here. And secondly, if you remember, we were working working towards getting ourselves industrious and imperial bees. Now, I actually got industrious and imperial bees probably about seven episodes ago now. And if we look in here, we have industrious bees being breeded. We have like a ton of drones and an industrious queen. And over here, we have an imperial queen and a ton of imperial drones. And they have been going for a long time now. Look at this. We have one, two, and a bit stacks of drones. And then almost two and a half stacks of, of royal jelly as well, which is pretty nice. And then over here, we have a bunch of this stringy comb as well as quite a few stacks of uh, industrious drones as well, which is pretty nice. And then, of course, all of these have still been working, making, like, cultivateds and, and just normals and just all kinds of bees. We've got loads and loads and loads of bees is basically the top and bottom of it there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start by jumping into a mod that's going to help us a ton when it comes to bee breeding. And that mod is Gendustry? 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 I'm not quite sure how we pronounce the mod, but it's gender straight. G E N D U S T R A Y Gender straight? G I don't know. I've heard it pronounced a bunch of different ways. Anyway, we're going to start by making a few machines from gender straight. The first one that we're going to make is the muted mutagen? Mutagen producer, as well as the Mutatron. These are the two machines that we're going to work on today. And we're probably going to also move on at some point and get ourselves an industrial APRA and move on from there. And you'll see why a little bit later on down the line. But these things are pretty expensive. Uh, they require some hoppers, which, I mean, is not really expensive at all. It's actually fairly cheap. We'll go ahead and make one of those. A lot of Tinker's Alloy, which I don't know if we have. We have a bit of Tinker's Alloy, I think... 54 should be enough, but as you can see, we do need quite a bit of it. And if you get the thermal foundation recipe, you can make it like so. This thing looks like it's going to be really expensive, but it's really not. It's glass panes and tin. Should be fairly easy. That's a mutagen, a mutagen tank. Uh, my gosh, I, for some reason, I cannot say that word. Mutagen. And, of course, we need cobblestone. So, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to go grab a bunch of cobblestone from my quarry. Because right now, all of our cobblestone is being thrown away. We should really set up, like, a barrel or a deep storage unit that's actually got, like, a nice backlog of cobblestone. And look at this. We've got, like, 100 diamonds right now, which is awesome. So, I'm going to go away. I'm going to empty um, this thing out. I'm going to stop the cobblestone from going away. And I'll be back in a second once I've made the uh, the Mutagen producer and the Mutatron. I I'll show you the recipes here real quick. They're really not all that hard to make. We need a sturdy casing. And this thing is made using three B receptacles as well as a power module, which is fairly simple. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to make those. And I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, we have everything we need to make ourselves the Mutagen, the mutagen producer. And there we go. We can go ahead and grab that. And now in order to make the Mutatron, on, this guy over here, we actually need to make ourselves a genetics processor, which uses a mechanic that I have not used in a long time now, the assembly table. Now, this recipe itself can actually be done in, in a crafting table, which is pretty cool, but the uh, this thing here, the pulsating chipset, does have to be made inside an assembly table, so we are going to jump back into the world of buildcraft. I don't even think we've used buildcraft like, at all so far in, in, this, uh, in this series, apart from to make the pipes for the... Um, the bees outside. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves an assembly table. That is this guy over here. It's made using a diamond gear, which is pretty expensive, actually requiring a, a gold gear, so quite a bit of iron and, uh, and gold as well. So we'll take that. And I say quite a bit of iron. I mean one, which... It, some people might class that as quite a bit of iron, but so uh, we'll go ahead and grab the diamond gear, and then we're going to use some obsidian, some diamonds, and some redstone to get ourselves an assembly table. Now, this thing is powered 
by lasers. So in order to get this thing, the four to, the four hundred thousand jewels that we're going to need in order to uh, to make ourselves a pulsating chipset, we need to use lasers from BC Silicon, which is Bellcraft Silicon. Uh, lasers are made using two diamonds, two obsidian, and some redstone. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab two just to make this a little bit faster. And now we've got to find somewhere to put these things. Um, I have absolutely no idea where I'm going to put them. I, had, I I wasn't, like, preparing to make these, like, ever, to be fair, because in this mod pack, they're not really used all that much. But I guess we could go ahead and put them downstairs, maybe. Like, for now, for now, we'll put them, like, here, here, and here, just because I don't really have a place to put them, and this kind of works nicely as a source of power. So if you look in here, you can see that now it's not doing anything at the minute. Uh, they have, since 1.6 changed it to RF, this used to say uh, Minecraft jewels, because Buildcraft used to be like 100% Minecraft jewels. But you can see these do fill up at the top there. It says 10,000 out of 10,000 RF. So they are all filled up. The more of these that put down, you put down, the faster the assembly table will assemble whatever it is you're trying to make. And in order to make the pulsating chipset that we need, we need a piece of redstone like so, and an ender pearl. Really simple stuff. We'll take both of those. If we put the redstone in, we get the option for a redstone chipset, and if we put the redstone and an ender pearl in, we get the option for the pulsating chipset, which, if we go ahead and click, you can see it's energy required for 100,000. It is working at 40 redstone flux per tick. It's going up to 80 now because both lasers are active. If we added a third, it should go up to 140 redstone flux per tick, and so on and so on and so on. 40 redstone flux per tick extra for every laser that we have. And uh, that's going to take a while. It's going to take quite a bit of time for that thing to, uh, to fill up. Whilst that's doing that, we can go ahead and set up our mutagen producer over in our little bee hut outside. And we're going to need some flux ducts in order for this to work. These are the energy conduits from Thermal Dynamics. It's going to take me a while to get used to calling them flux ducts as opposed to, uh, to conduits. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to move these chests because I'm fed up with these chests being in the way. We don't really need them there. Uh, to be fair, I don't know if we even really need them, but we'll move them, like, over here for now. Get rid of some of these flowers. And we'll set up our mutagen stuff over in this little corner. We are being attacked. Do you mind? I am quite clearly trying to play with bees here. You are making me destroy valuable flowers. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's just move that again to like there. There we go. All right, let's get ourselves a mutagen mutagen producer, and we're gonna go ahead and stick that down right about there. Now it does need power to run, and as you may have guessed from the name, this thing produces mutagen. And the way it does it is, I believe you can use things like glowstone, lapis, and redstone. Not sure if you can use anything else other than that. Actually, we can test it here real quick. Uh, if we grab some lapis, I'm... Oh, my God. We need to put a door on this thing. Get out of here, you mother truckers. Jeez. Zombies all over the place. Uh, we can put... I think red... I know redstone works for a fact, and I think redstone blocks are actually the best way to get mutagen. But I think you can also use lapis and glowstone as well. Let's see. Does lapis work? It doesn't. I know for a fact, he says with a question mark on the end, that glowstone works. It does. Glowstone works. Now, it takes a while. It takes a long while. And, okay, so we can use uranium. Uranium gives us a lot, actually. <laughs> uranium gives us 9,000 millibuckets there. Glowstone gives us a bit, a tiny amount if we just use the, uh, the glowstone dust there. Redstone gives us a fair amount, 900 millibuckets, so a bit more than the glowstone does, but not quite as much as, like, your lorium and the uranium, but uranium is pretty expensive, so we're not going to be working on uranium, it needs to go through a thermal centrifuge and all that jazz, so we're not going to work on that for now, for now what we'll do is, we'll probably use our redstone, I think we have quite a bit of, uh, we need to increase the range of our thing, geez, um, I think we have quite a bit of redstone, this should be working, right, oh, oh, why have you turned off, is this using so much power that that's just turned off? I, f I feel like it shouldn't be using that much power. Um, hmm. How strange. Uh, let's, 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 let's. Let's disconnect this. Because undoubtedly the, the UU Matter creation machine, the mass fabricator, is using like the vast majority of our energy right now. So that should turn that back on. Okay, let's quickly grab some Eulorium and fill up our big reactor over here. Get this guy up and running again. That should help with our power situation a little bit and keep this guy going, even if the the uh, the mass fabricator is on. But anyway, let's head back over here. Where were we? We were doing redstone. I think we have quite a bit of redstone. We do we got 7,000 and we got 59 redstone blocks already ready for us. So we'll go ahead and we'll just throw all of those into the 
there like that. Like I said, it takes quite a while. It's not the fastest machine in the world, but that's going to go ahead and that's going to start to produce some mutagen for us to use in our mutatron. Now, is our pulsating circuit board thing ready? The answer is probably no, but it's almost there. So once this is done, we can go ahead and make ourselves a mutatron, which you may be able to guess what this thing does actually by the name. It's fairly cool. We are going to need some nether quartz, some diamonds. I told you we're using a lot of diamonds today, and this is not even the top and bottom of it. We've got even more diamonds that we're going to be using in like just a second here. This thing is almost there. It's at 390,000 RF, so we're just going to kind of sit here and, and wait for it to get to, to 400,000. And there we go. Okay, nice. It does throw the things out onto the top. You can put a chest on top of this thing, and it will put things into the chest automatically. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to spit them out onto the floor, and you have to pick them up. Now we have ourselves the uh, the pulsating chipset. We can go ahead and get ourselves one of these. And then we can go ahead and get ourselves a mutatron, almost, he says. As we don't have all this stuff. I thought we had all this stuff. Anyway, we've got some more Tinker's Alloy. We can go ahead and make ourselves another sturdy casing. And then everything else should be fairly easy. We need four of those gears again. And there we go. <laughs> a mutatron. Nice. All right. Let's grab ourselves a fluid duct. We're going to use this to pull the uh, the mutagen from the... I, I think the fluid's called mutagen. Yeah, we're gonna use the we're gonna use the fluid to pull the mutagen from the mutagen producer of my gosh, I I cannot pronounce this word for some reason I can't say the word producer now either. But so we're gonna use this to uh, to pull the mutagen from here and put it into the mutatron. This guy over here. Now, what this thing does is actually super useful, and we probably should have made it a little while back to make our lives just a little bit easier. But basically, what it does is it forces bees to breed, and when they do, it makes sure that you get the the output that you want. So, for instance, if we were to look at the Imperial bird drone, let's have a look, Imperial, uh, over here, in order to get an Imperial bee, you need to breed a Majestic and a Noble. Now, we did this for such a long time. We did so many of these. Like, we, we had to put Noble and Majestic together over here over and over and over again because there's only an 8% chance that you will actually get the, the Imperial Drone out of it. Now, in the Mutatron, if you put those two bees in, it does use up uh, quite a bit of Mutagen, and it does use up the, I think they're called, like, Gene Industry Tools. Let's see here. They're called Ge Genetics Labware, which does use a diamond. So it does use a diamond, but you do get 16. So it's kind of, it uses a bit of mutagen and one sixteenth of a diamond. But it guarantees that you will get the Imperial Drone. You'll get that offspring, even though there's only an 8% chance. Guarantees it, which is pretty awesome. And it's going to mean that in the future, when we want to get ourselves some of the high-end bees that produce some really cool stuff, we can guarantee that we will get them if we produce them using this Mutatron. So... Let's start by going ahead and making some of these. I'm going to make two sets. Like I said, there's quite a few diamonds we've made just there. And then we're also going to go ahead and grab nothing? I don't think. I, 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 I felt like we needed something there. But I think all we actually needed was some of this genetics labware. Let's throw you in there like that. And then I feel like we should do one just to kind of show this off here. Um, I don't know, though, if we have all the stuff. We have quite a few drones lying around. That's a diligent. That's an weary. Uh, there's the Noble. What is it? Noble and Majestic. Do we have a Majestic? Probably not. <laughs> we have a Cultivated. What can we make here? What can I, I use to show this? Noble plus Cultivated. That we can do. Let's take a Noble Princess and let's take a Cultivated Drone. And if we throw these both into the Mutatron, like so, boom and boom, it should go ahead and produce us a Majestic. Like guaranteed we should get a Majestic here. And there we go. We got a Majestic. It does use up the other two bees, so you do lose them. But it does guarantee you get a Majestic Queen, which you can then go away and put wherever you want. I'm just going like, to throw it in here for now. And that's going to go ahead and slowly work down. It doesn't like the fact that it's raining. There's nothing really we can do about that apart from go toggle down fall. <laughs> like that and get rid of the rain. But that's just going to go ahead and break down. And once it's broken down, if we have some slots for it, which we now do, it's going to give us the Majestic Queen, a Majestic Drone, and whatever the Majestic Bees usually give out, which is pretty awesome. So again, let's just go ahead and just dump these guys in here for now. So what are we going to do? Well, one of the resources that we need an awful lot of, and yet somehow have like none of, is Shiny Metal. If we go ahead and type in here Shiny Metal, we have one Shiny Metal. 
also known as platinum. Now, shiny metal is used in an awful lot of stuff here. If we press U, you'll notice that it's most commonly used, and we'll just do it over here, in making the endorium ingots that are required to make ourselves most of the cool stuff in thermal expansion. So you'll see that endorium blend, and then we can make those into endorium ingots. So to make all the like tesseracts and all of the blocks for the turbines that we have right at the bottom down there, which are making this thing so powerful, we need a ton of shiny metal. But shiny metal is like extremely rare. We've used like all of the shiny metal that we had. And despite having like 12,000 iron, 6,000 copper, 7,000 tin, we have one shiny metal, which is absolutely terrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some bees that are going to produce shiny metal, aka platinum, for us. And the way we're going to do that is by breeding ourselves a platinum bee. So let's go ahead and type in platinum, platinum. And we're going to try and make ourselves a Platinum Queen. This one, Platinum Queen, sounds like an album. We, this thing is made by putting a Nickel Princess uh, or a Nickel Drone and then an Invar Princess or Invar Drone. It doesn't matter which way around these go into our Mutatron. Nickel is made using Ferrous and Esoteric. And then Ferrous is made using, let's have a look, Common and Industrious. So, let's grab ourselves, we'll probably use a Common Queen and an industrious drone because we have a common cool princess sorry not queen and then industrious i don't want to use our industrious princess and uh, that's not industrious because we only have one and it's working very hard to get us a lot more industrious drones so let's take that and that and throw them both in there again it's going to use one of our generic uh, genetics labware and that should get us the ferris maybe there's a long chain <laughs> i'm just gonna say it's a long chain yeah that's gonna get us ferris and then from ferris we need to make uh, Esoteric, which is made using Cultivated and Eldritch. And Eldritch is made using... Uh, the one we're going to do is Sorceress and Cultivated. So, it's a bit of a pain sometimes. I've got us a Ferris Queen, which is kind of nice. So, we can go ahead and just kind of, again, uh, throw this into here somewhere. And that's going to get us all the Ferris stuff. You can go in there. Uh, we are going to next need... What was it? Cultivated. Uh, I know for a fact we needed as well as... Sorceress, I want to say. Let's check this here real quick. Nickel, uh, Esoteric, Cultivated, and Eldritch. Eldritch was common and Sorceress? Uh, no, Cultivated and Sorceress. Okay, I know for a fact we have some Sorceress. Do we have a Cultivated Princess? We should somewhere is the answer to that question. Let's see here. Cultivated. That will do. We'll take you and we'll go ahead and blend those up and get ourselves the uh, the Eldritch. But basically what I'm going to do, guys, now, I'm going to go away and I'm going to do this for far too long until we have ourselves a Platinum Queen. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a really, really, really long time later, I think we have everything we need here to get ourselves a Platinum Queen. So if we go ahead and mix Ferris and Nickel... That should go ahead and get us an Invar Queen. And then once we throw our Invar Queen in the apiary, that should turn into an Invar Princess and an Invar Drone. We can then mix the Invar Drone with our Nickel Princess, and that should get us a Platinum Queen. So we'll just throw the Invar Queen in there. That's going to take quite a while to break down into an Invar Drone and an Invar Princess. I have had to wait for this process so many times going through this here. We had to do, like, Eldritch. I had to wait for the Eldritch to break down. I had to wait for the Cultivator to break down. For some reason, I got a Charmed Queen somewhere along the line. I think... For some reason, when I mixed, like, Eldritch and Cultivated, there's, like, two that it can possibly make. So, the first time I did it, I got Charmed, which means I had to do the whole thing again in order to get the Esoteric, which is a massive pain in the backside. But, I think once this is done, hopefully there's only one thing. Oh, it's missing. Ooh. Hive members are not finding the right flowers. That's not good. Okay, where is our good old Bealyza? It's out of range, which I believe means that we are out of power once again. Which I don't see why we should be. Uh, let's see. Are you still running? You are. This thing is still turned off. Where is our power? Okay, so for some reason, I think the lasers were actually kind of idly just draining all of the power coming out of our turbine there. Uh, we might want to bear that in mind. I think that has been a problem with the lasers before, and I do think they kind of constantly uh, take power even if they don't need it. So we do have to bear that in mind. I'm going to stick them back uh, in the AE system for now. We might not even need them uh, for future use. But let's go ahead and grab ourselves the Bealyzer as well as a little bit of honey. And I think there's going to be uh, some specific requirements that are going to need to be met in order for this bee to actually start to breed which is a bit of a pain, but uh, it's kind of the nature of the bees, I guess. Let's see, which one do we need? We need the centrifuge. 
Thank you. I want to keep the, the, the hunger thing. Let's do this. This also needs power. So for now, I'm just going to stick it there. And let's get ourselves some money. Hopefully, we get some fairly soon. Da, 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 da. And I didn't want the beeswax, but I do will take the honey. Okay, let's see. The beelizer probably has honey in it, to be fair, actually. Let's see. Uh, yes, it does. It has a lot of honey in it. All right, let's see. Where is it at? Invar Princess, what do you need? Okay, nether. That is why it's not working. So this is something that we actually have to do with the Platinum Princess as well in order to have this thing break down. But uh, it's missing the required flowers that it needs. And the reason for that is because it needs nether flowers. It wants to have nether wart around it in order for it to work. So something we're going to have to do is grab ourselves some nether wart, which we actually don't have, surprisingly enough. Let's grab some soul sand and let's go see if we can find some nether wart real quick. Okay, so after scouring the nether for about 30 minutes and somehow managing not to find a single piece of nether wards, we are going to go ahead and call upon our old friend Batania to try and help us make some. We're going to use this little recipe here by throwing a blaze rod into a mana pool that has an alchemical catalyst underneath it, uh, which does require an ender pearl thrown into a mana pool. So let's quickly do something like this. Not at all how I plan to do this, by the way, but it looks like it's the only way I'm going to be able to do it. Uh, the only nether fortress that I found within like a thousand block radius had no nether wart in it whatsoever, which I was like severely disappointed at. So, I think if we just take this, grab ourselves some of those blaze rods, and I think we just put this underneath a mana pool. It should allow us to turn blaze rods into soul sand, into nether wart. Uh, could you? That's some snazzy glasses you have, but at the same time, I would rather you didn't. Uh, also, you can just stay out there. Uh, if I do this, try not to break the mana pool because I want to keep the mana in there. If I do that, I think that should work. Oh, it does. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> okay. So after we've used like the world's longest method ever to get nether one, let's head back over here. Let's do this. And what we need to do now is we need to just go ahead and wait. I'm just going to put them here and here. That should now have all the flowers it needs. It is dark, so it's not going to work at night anyway, but it should have all the flowers it needs, so that should go ahead and start to break down as soon as, uh, as the day comes. If it doesn't, we may have to work on some stuff. Uh, in the meantime, whilst I was doing all of the bee work, whilst I was waiting for all of the apiaries to finish their uh, decomposing queens down into princesses and drones, I did go ahead and teach our AE system how to make the solar panels, and I also went ahead and added a second 1k crafting storage to our little setup back here, and the reason why I did that is because when I went to go ahead and request three of these solar panels, you will see that it uses 2,023 bytes. Now, the way it works is each one of these that we have right now holds 1024 so each 1k crafting storage holds 1024 bytes so having two of them should hold 2048 bytes which is just enough to uh, to accommodate all of the crafting for three of these and if we, we, we want to make anything like more complex in the future we will have to add either more 1k crafting storage solutions or go for like the 4k 16k 64k ones to make some really really high-end stuff but we can go ahead and hit start and that's just going to go ahead and do its thing make a bunch of solar panels let's go grab some sleep and then see if this thing's actually going to work. So that took about 30 real life minutes there to actually transform from the queen into the drone and the princess, but hopefully it will all pay off. So let me get rid of some stuff we don't need. All we need now is the nickel and the invar. So we're going to take the invar drones, we're going to mix it with a nickel princess, and it should give us a platinum queen. So nickel and invar. Moment of truth, the moment we've just spent like the last few hours working towards, this should, if it gives us something else, I'm going to be annoyed. There we go, we got ourselves a Platinum Queen, finally. Uh, this thing also is going to take a long while, it's very specific about how it wants to be to be breeded or bred, I guess. Uh, the reason this one took so long, by the way, is because this thing uh, wanted an arid, uh, it wanted an arid humidity and a hot temperature. We gave it neither, so it's going to take a lot longer to, uh, to breed there, but we now have a princess. Next episode, we will come back and we will start to automate the production of shiny uh, ingots, aka the, uh, the Platinum, using the Platinum Queen. But for now, thanks for watching. If you did Enjoy the video, just hit like, and I will see you guys next time.